Ladies and gentlemen, go mental and welcome Joanne Roy! nice to be here. You'll probably tell from my accent before I get going. I am actually from Birmingham. Yay! And I brought a coach load with me. <laughs> and I've been living in London a few years now and I, I don't know what it is about London, right, but every now and then I meet these really strange people. <laughs> the sort of people, right, will ask you where you're from and when you say you're from Birmingham, they say, oh, you're from Birmingham. <laughs> <laughs> like you're really thick. <laughs> And I was thinking about it and I thought, please, where did they get the idea that every single Birmingham person is stupid? <laughs> and then it came to me, we want to be together. <laughs> <laughs> but thankfully I'm not fully English. My mum is actually from Ireland, right? And she's a fantastic woman. I'll do you a quick description. She's really, really small, really, really thin and really, really frightened <laughs> of everything. Yeah. But the main thing that frightens her is escalators. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah. And uh, she rings me up in London every day. We have the same conversation. She'd be like, hello. <laughs> I'll be like, all right, mum. How's London? <laughs> I'm like, it's fine, thanks. Have you got a boyfriend? <laughs> yes, I have. What's he like? Well, he's an alcoholic <laughs> who beats me and takes all my money. <laughs> She's like, well, what? She doesn't get you on one of those escalators. <laughs> worried I'm going to be on drugs because she's been reading about E17. I actually felt a bit sorry for E17 when they were done for drugs. I did. But at least we know where their money's going, don't we? Because it's not going on clothes, is it? <laughs> they look really rough, don't you think, for a pop band? I'll tell you what they remind me of. They look like the sort of lads I would have gone out with when I was 13. Who would have packed me in in the playground? Or sent one of their mates to pack you in? I thought, Darren says he's finishing with you. <laughs> inside but on the outside you'd be like so <laughs> I don't care anyway I was finishing with him at first break anyway <laughs> but anyway I moved to London and I had no money so I just took the first job I could in Safeway supermarket right and this job was a nightmare it was terrible even the interview was worrying it's like hi I'm Julie personnel <laughs> So, Miss Enright, what do you think you've got to offer? Safe ways. I'm like, nothing. She's like, great, when can you start? <laughs> it's terrible for a woman, those jobs, because you've got to wear A-line polyester overalls. And it's static, just sticks to your thighs like that. And then you stick to everything like that. You do, that's why you always see cashiers in groups of threes. <laughs> This job though, I was working, I was working in quite a posh branch in Acton, right? And they've got a cafe in there. And that was the bit I was working in, the cafe for the customers, which was quite good actually. Because if any of the food was damaged, I got to eat it. So I'd be like this to my boss, Andre, I'd be like, Andre, I don't know what's happened, right? But someone seems to put a fist through the double chocolate fudge cake. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to work somewhere really posh though. I did. I wanted to work somewhere like Marks and Spencer's. <laughs> Do you know? But I don't even feel comfortable shopping in Marks and Spencers. I don't. I always think there's going to be an announcement over the tunnel, like, bum bum. We have a working class person in the store. <laughs> you obviously feel the same way then. They are jokers in there, aren't they? Those prices. I'm saving up for some lettuce. <laughs> I was actually quite glad to have this job at the time because I'd been unemployed for a long time, which is, you know, it's very difficult, isn't it, when you're on the dole? Basically because, I think, they give you loads of forms to fill in, don't they? And they ask the most stupid questions on these forms. I remember one of the questions said, Are you blind? <laughs> and the other one, I love this one, How far are you prepared to travel to work? All the way. <laughs> Some days, some days I might go a bit of the way. 
<laughs> and then phone in sick. <laughs> you don't know what you're going to be like when you wake up. You don't know what mood you're going to be in when you wake up. Well, we have some funny moods, don't we, when we wake up? We do. Do you ever wake up and you just feel ugly? <laughs> Please. <laughs> I say wake up and feel ugly because it's just a feeling, isn't it? No one's really ugly, are they? Everyone's got something about them, haven't they? Even if it's just a jumper. <laughs> I know. I've been out with him. <laughs> Come on, Darren, get your jumper on, we're going out. <laughs> you bundle of fun, you. I'm going to get one of my friends to pack you in. <laughs> I'm trying to give up alcohol because I discovered something very interesting about women and alcohol. And that's no matter how much vodka you drink, you can always remember your ex-boyfriend's telephone number, can't you? <laughs> I wasn't really confident as a kid, you see, because uh, I'll tell you the truth, I was the only kid in my class who always had nits. <laughs> every single time the knit nurse came and she wasn't the most sensitive woman in the world I remember she used to take me into the sick room and she used to, t she used to say things like right now then I don't want you to feel any different from all the other clean children in the school <laughs> mm, I feel special now because I was a kid in the 70s, which, which was a really good time to grow up. Basically because we had swap shop, didn't we? Yes, the swap shop posse are in. Swap shop was great because you could tell that the kids that were phoning in weren't swapping their own things, were they? <laughs> oh. You get like, it's Darren, age seven from Leicester. He'd like to swap a black and decker workmate <laughs> for buckaroo. <laughs> Or on line two, we've got Karen. Hello, my name's Karen. I'm four and a half. And I would like to swap my Philips Lady Shave <laughs> for a teeny tiny tears. Dolls in the 70s were brilliant, weren't they? Does anyone remember walkie talkie dolls? Yeah, they had a string, didn't they? And you used to pull the string and they'd say stuff like, I've got a cold choo. <laughs> Thanks for clapping. It's the only impression I do. <laughs> I do it well, though, don't I? It's because I'm the actual size. <laughs> it's tragic. Sheepskin was very big in the 70s as well. I, I don't know if you remember these. I had the sheepskin mittens. They were kind of sewn. They were hideous, weren't they? They were oven gloves, weren't they? <laughs> you go, no, Mum, they're not fashion. They're kitchenware, please. <laughs> a string through your duffel coat, weren't they? And the string was always that bit too short, you'd be like... Oh. <laughs> I used to phone up Swap Shop and say, hello, it's Joe from Birmingham. I've got a pair of sheepskin mittens and I've got an A-line sheepskin coat and basically you can just have them. Because <laughs> they're vile. Anyway, you've been absolutely gorgeous. Thank you for listening. Good night. <laughs>